yeah, here we go. The measure of one's greatness. Now, this is a leap into the unknown. But it's very known. It's just hardly ever spoken or broken down. So, to be great is an ability in which one has the capability of being. But how is it that you measure that greatness? Like I like to say, greater to the great is the greatest, but that's a trilogy. This right here is just going to be you. So, suffrage, you must suffer to achieve an evolved spirit. And for that to be, you must have something to give up within that suffrage. To develop a discipline is to grow. And in life, there is only progression or digression. If you're not growing, then you're most definitely in a problematic system of decay. Mm which means that um, you're losing parts of yourself day by day, minute by minute, second by second. I mean, we only have this very moment now. So, on those in search of guidance along the way, I mean, this is not what this is. This is merely speaking on problematic subjects so that way you can take that dive into your own life and see what it is that's either holding you back or helping you achieve higher self. Or maybe a little bit of both. But to measure one's greatness is their capacity to suffer. I mean, great is a positive word, one of the greatest positive words, as I just used it to describe itself. You're also joyful. Suffering doesn't mean that you're sad or unhappy or better yet, in decay. Now you see, suffering is a part of life, but it's one's choice to see it as a loss or a lesson. If you're seeing suffering as being detrimental, holding you back, then you very well are on that other side of the fence when it comes to suffering. Now see, if you accept all the challenges and see it as a lesson learned instead of something you weren't aiming to gain, then you're on this side of the fence. And this side of the fence is how you measure one's greatness. So, breaking that all the way down, those that have a higher capacity to suffer are going to measure higher on the Richter scale of greatness. Because although your great to my great isn't the greatest because suffering is different for all the people, depending on where you come from, your background, how you were raised, and the programmings on which you were programmed with. This one here is to break the programming that suffering means anything more than how great you are. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, that could very possibly, if you let it in and accept it, could change your whole mind frame on the way you speak about yourself and the way you speak about your life. Because the past is just a story that we tell ourselves, as is the future. See, one is already done, so you speak on what has been. One is yet to come, so you have the ability to depict and state whether this is going to be that or that is this. It's all one and the same. Simply a story. 
Believe in me, whatever you speak, you will be and you will see. So, be mindful of the story that you tell of the past because there's a silver lining in everything. I rather stick to the positive side because although no matter how negative or detrimental the story or situation was, I guarantee the further you dig, you'll see the light, silver lining. And that outweighs the bad any day. Measure yourself to be great with an insight of how much you suffer. That there, you will achieve higher self, evolved spirit, or evolutionary growth. It's a process. The discipline that develops from the suffering, which in turn forms into that growth, is a system of techniques. There's four techniques. All life's problems can and will be solved if you allow them to be. Now see, most people have the answers already, but the answer either is too big, truth hurts, it might be painful the answer to solve your problem, so they look the other way. Turn a blind eye, as most would say, or simply just keep going with their eyes wide shut. This is here to open that eye, these four techniques. Delay gratification, take your time, realize. If you're moving at the speed of light, there's most definitely going to be a lot that you miss. Take the time, look around, smell the roses, because across from a garden could be a dirt lot. Assumption of responsibility. Now see, it's great to take responsibility, own up to whatever it is that you are accountable for. Although, as great as that is, don't always assume everything is because of you. Assumptions are progressions assassin. Not everything happens because of you. There's cause and effect actions beyond reactions, but this here is has nothing to do with you, but everything to do with everyone. Don't assume. When you did it, by all means, stand up tall and take that responsibility and accept the consequences which come with that. A lot of us accept consequences that aren't ours believing that we are really responsible for something that may have been out of our hands. That's where you want to take your time. Third, dedication to truth. Now see, dedication to truth is simply dedication to you. And you are life. So in other words, dedication to life is dedication to you, and how you get there is truth. Be dedicated, not, don't, and won't are the three things which will hold you back from getting to the truth because some focus, like I said, on the other side of the fence. Truth hurts, but it's about time you and I and the rest of us accept these truths so we can progress to growth instead of degress to decay. Lastly, balancing. Now see, you have the yin and the yang which is most represented as balance. You have 
the dark of life on one, the light of life on the other, but within the light of life, you have a small dot of the dark. Within the dark of light, you have a small light of the positive side. Now see, this is life, and that is truth. Everything in life has balance, as light wouldn't be light without dark. And we wouldn't understand dark if it wasn't for light, as light shines in the dark. Allow the discipline to evolve to higher spiritual levels. Strengthen energy within willingness to use these techniques are provided by love. Motive for discipline is love. Now see, you're measuring your greatness by suffering. To do that, you must develop discipline to grow. But it all forms back to the same element, love. That's where you'll find the motivation to discipline yourself, to discipline your life, and far and wide discipline those around you because if you walk with love, you'll attract those that walk with love. If you have a defined form of discipline in your life, you will find other people that are programmed themselves to be motivation, discipline, love. Now see, real love, there, there's, there's a feeling of love, being in love. Now see, that's not what this is here. Real love does not come from a feeling of love. Love is an extendance of oneself to another's spiritual growth. Love is the extendance of oneself to another's spiritual growth, which means the feeling of love, I love you. You have making love, you have being in love. Now see, real love, the love that I'm speaking of, isn't as simple as being, having a feeling felt of in love, because that's the love that you hear so commonly being fell out of. Now, real love can be fallen out or fallen into because it is simply there and it coexists with the rest of the elements within your life. You choose to open that door to love or keep it closed. Once it's open, it's there and now you'll realize that you could have disciplined yourself and had motivation to provide the greatness within your suffering. towards evolutionary progress. Love is as love does. Love does as love is. You see, that's balance. As one may see it to be dark, the other may see it as light, but once you get to explaining and defining, love just is. And simply, like I said, you choose you're not going to gain any insight by just trying to look inside. You must go inside of your insight to see what is inside. Is it light? You, I, we, all of us don't have to love. That's the best part. In other words, you don't have to have it. You don't have to live it. You don't have to have it within you choose to. So we don't have to love, we choose to love. And that there is the best part because you selflessly decided to extend yourself to another with the only gain being that they grow, not you. That's selflessness. Or it could be selfishness because at the end of the day, you're so profoundly walking with love that when they grow, you grow. Understand growth and if you can understand something, it's only because you overstood it already. That's the best part here. As everything else in life, 
you have the right to choose. Now tell me this. How, from here on out, will you decide to tell that story of your life? How are you now going to measure the greatness within oneself, yourself? Mindful of the words you use to define where you've been, where you're from, and exactly where you're going to be, inspired to be. This is only to inspire an evolutionary process to an evolved spirit by love. One of the strongest elements within this life you have to choose. The choice is yours leap into the unknown as we leapt into the unknown woke up out your sleeping self fear is the absence of truth don't be surprised what the unknown can uncover mastery of